Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator and in today's video we are going to be discussing in quite some detail about Airbus A320 landing techniques. Now of course everybody wants to get that perfect landing, that butter landing, but we're going to talk in detail about things like the flare and in particular flare law and what the Airbus A320 does in those final few feet above the runway threshold. So you begin your flare, but how much flare and what affects the amount of back pressure on the side stick you need to put in to try and get that perfect landing that you're after. We'll be looking in detail about how the weather also affects how much flare you need and things like the different flap configurations as well. We'll also talk about false visual perspectives, things like the black hole effect. All of these things combined all make a big difference on how you guide in that approach and then how you flare your aircraft at the last few feet. So hopefully by the end of this video you'll have a really good understanding in what the aircraft is doing and how you can help manipulate it to get the landing that you're after. So the first thing we're going to look at is the flare law and what it is. Well, it starts at around 50 feet. So on this approach here, I'm just going to pause the aircraft as we get above the threshold at 50 feet and then we'll have a look at what happens to our Airbus A320. Ideally, a good approach sees that 50 feet call out arrive just as we pass over the runway threshold, those piano keys, but here we are. So if we look down now at the bottom of the primary flight display, you'll see I've just paused that five feet late. We're at 45 feet, but that's okay. So what happens here? Well, you're probably aware by now that the Airbus A320 and its flyby wire systems has what's called auto trim. And the idea behind this is that the aircraft commands a G load. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail regarding that, but at 50 feet, this is where things change. At 50 feet, the horizontal stabilizer at the back of the aircraft memorizes the attitude of the aircraft and freezes its position. You then get a direct side stick to elevator relationship, which is much more like what you would find in a traditional aircraft like a 737 or even a Cessna. What you do on the side stick reflects what happens to the trimmable horizontal stabilizer at the back of the aircraft. So if you pull back or push forward on the side stick, the horizontal stabilizer at the back of the aircraft works just like it would do if you were flying a conventional aircraft without fly-by-wire systems. This then is the Airbus flare mode. Now, the next thing that happens then, once we pass 30 feet, the system reduces its pitch attitude to nose down over eight seconds. And this then gives the pilots a natural tendency to want to pull back on that side stick and flare. So just to avoid confusion, I'll say that again. Basically, once you get to 30 feet, the aircraft will automatically start to pitch and lower its nose down. So you as the pilot then on that side stick want to pull back and flare. Now we can actually see this in action and if we want to really demonstrate this, let's have a look at performing a landing where we get to 50 feet, enter the flare mode, we're going to get to 30 feet, but I'm not going to do anything with the side stick, I'm not going to pull back and you will see the nose start to lower. Let's have a look. So you can see our radio altimeter at the bottom of the primary flight display. If I just lower the viewpoint a little bit, you can see that's getting lower. Once we get to 50 feet, that's when we're going to enter the flare mode. I'm not going to touch the side stick. And then when we get to 30 feet, that's when you're going to actually see that nose lower down. Ignore the auto land uh, red light that's flashing. That's just the way the system has been set up just to uh, give this uh, example. So here we go. That's uh, down 50 feet and then here at 30 feet watch the nose down it goes down it goes I'm not touching it and you get a hard landing if you look outside you'll see that happen even more clearly so we reach about 30 feet just here and see that nose starting to drop and touch down <laughs> not a comfortable one for the passengers so when should we actually start that flare and how much back pressure on the side stick should we put in every single landing is different so it's almost impossible to give the perfect answer and experience here counts for a lot. Microsoft Flight Simulator's weather system really does a good job and of course the Phoenix A320 with its systems also really does a good job of replicating the real aircraft. 
So let's have a look at how we would do it in different scenarios. One of the first things to talk about though, and I have mentioned this before on the channel, is if we just go back to where we enter the flare mode, so here we are at 45 feet, just have a look at the pitch attitude of the aircraft. Remember, most of the time you are already going to be in a nose up attitude. Now the 2D screen visual representation of a home desktop simulator doesn't usually help with this and it can give you a false perspective of looking down onto the runway when actually you are pitched up which is why now I use the down arrow on my keyboard just to drop the view a little bit as we're coming in for the final few feet of uh, landing as it gives a better perspective so the fact that you are already nose up means that you probably don't need to put in as much back pressure on the flare as you think but lots of things do affect this Let's have a look then at a few different scenarios. So on this video here, you can see we are coming into Manchester, runway 23 right, and we've got quite a significant headwind. Well, that headwind, of course, is buffeting the aircraft, almost lifting the nose up a little bit. We're getting lots of air over the wings, plenty of lift. You can see as well, looking at the primary flight display, we're pitched up quite a bit as well. So the fact that we do have so much headwind on this landing means you will need less back pressure, less flare, on the side stick when you come into land because the wind is helping you down all the way. So if we just watch this landing here, you'll see that actually I hardly need to do anything and we still get a nice steady touchdown. So what of the opposite effect? What if you've got a decent tailwind? Right, as we've got here, we've got a decent tailwind. So as you would probably expect, when you've got the wind pushing you from behind, you're going to probably need a bit more back pressure and a little more flare. And there may be instances as well where you even want to begin that flare a little earlier, maybe around the 35, 40 feet mark. And again, experience counts for a lot. And the more you practice anything, like everything, you get better at it. But you can see here, this is a tailwind landing and I start that flare just a little bit earlier just to help tease us down a little gentler with the wind coming in from uh, from behind us. Now both of those landings were fully config landings so flaps full for the landing but quite often we'll also do a flaps 3 landing. Benefits of flaps 3 landing is it's a little bit less fuel it's also a lot quieter as well for the residents so airports and the environmental uh, agencies prefer flaps 3 so when you've got a nice long runway always advisable if you can get away with that but this also causes a difference with the perspective. Have a look at the pitch attitude of the aircraft here. This is a flaps 3 landing and you'll see that we are pitched up just a little bit more, right up to 5 degrees. So this gives you a different perspective visually. So you're going to want to again perhaps not need quite as much flare because you're already pitched up but it's something that can perhaps if you're not used to doing it give you a visual look out on screen and think something doesn't look quite right and it's purely just because the aircraft is pitched up higher for a flaps 3 landing than it is a fully config landing. Landing. Once you uh, do it like anything else, you'll get used to it, but definitely a slightly different view and something to consider. So uh, perhaps not quite as much flare again for flaps three as you would for flaps full. Of course, the weather and the wind will always play an effect as well. So lots of things to take into consideration. So we have spent the last few minutes talking in some detail about the flare, but let's just take a couple of other scenarios and have a look at other things that can potentially mess up our overall approach. The first thing I'm going to look at is the runway width. So this is coming into Berlin Brandenburg's airport runway 25 left, and this runway is 60 meters wide. The normal runway width is around 45 meters. So when we have a much larger runway, a wider runway, again, this gives us a different perspective and it can play tricks with us if we don't know what to look out for. A really wide runway can give you a perspective that makes you think that you are lower than you actually are. So as any good pilot would do, they want to compensate for that. So if you're not careful, you can actually end up being too high on the approach just because of how it looks. And then as you might expect, the exact opposite is true. 
when we're landing on a narrow runway the narrowest runway for the a320 is 30 meters and that's what we've got here on screen a 30 meter narrow runway makes you think that you are much higher than you actually are so to compensate for that a pilot can sometimes get a little bit too low this is skiathos airport so it's a short runway and it's a very narrow runway really difficult as well as there is no ILS system so it's purely a visual approach so if you are coming into a narrow runway and you think that you're too high make sure you're looking at pappies and things like that so you don't end up dropping too low down to compensate there has been instances where pilots have actually crashed usually it's been the smaller aircraft and not commercial aircraft because of the systems on board but it's just another perspective that can play with your mind and play tricks visually with how it looks now let's have a look at this approach in a different light in fact a completely different light this is the exact same approach but this time obviously it's at night time and as you saw from the video a few seconds ago when it was daytime all we've got in front of the runway is the sea which means that there are no visual references there are no lights or anything and this can give us what is called the black hole effect when all you can see are the runway lights this again can make you think that you are high so consequentially you can fly lower to try and compensate for this when we've got no other cues available other than the runway lights it's very easy to get sucked into that black hole effect so in this particular instance we have the black hole effect we also have the narrow runway both of which can make you think you're high so you want to get lower down to try and compensate for that but actually stick to your guns stick to the pappies and trust what's in front of you don't be led astray by it so we've spoken about a lot of different things in this video and hopefully it's given you a better understanding about things to look out for when landing with regards to flaring and different visual perceptions that you can get also how the weather affects how much flare you need and when to initiate it etc if you do have any questions please leave a comment down below and i'll do my best to come back and uh, and answer if i can if you have found this video useful please do leave a like it really helps out the channel as well so a big thank you to every one of you who has already gone ahead and done that of course if you are new to the channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos and live streamed content thank you so so much for watching i look forward to seeing you all again next time bye bye for now